I've come to Newbra Forest, which is really easy to get lost in, by the way. Now I'm here to shoot this month's challenge for the Facebook group Landscape Photography on YouTube UK and the subject for this challenge is foliage which I set myself and I'm now bitterly regretting it because I'm absolutely rubbish at shooting foliage. <laughs> I've parked up at the end of Maltrith Cobb in the free car park and you could use that if you wanted to walk down through the forest to Llandwyn Island, although it's a good couple of miles and it's really easy to end up walking around in circles and getting lost in the forest. What I've done is I've followed the path that skirts the edge alongside the Maltrith estuary, which you can see behind me. It's a huge open area of wetlands, and you might think, well, that's gonna be quite difficult from a photographic standpoint. However, I've already found what I think might be quite an interesting composition. There's a little stream here that runs out past my camera tripod. And what that's doing is causing much bigger rushes to grow within the uh, open grassland. So they stick out like sore thumbs, and they look quite interesting as they form a line marching down towards the estuary. They're also catching the quite low afternoon sunlight and I'm hopeful it'll make a relatively interesting composition. Of course, the thing about shooting in woodlands and forests is that you have to get much more intimate with the landscape. You've never seen me in a forest before in all of my previous 50 odd vlogs. I'm more about wide open vistas of mountains and coast. But I've always intended to come to Newbra and make a vlog because I do enjoy this type of photography. But in a lot of respects, and I think other landscape photographers find this as well, it can be quite difficult. So as I'm walking along through the forest, what I'm looking for is, is light and shade and detail. I think I found something that sort of fits the bill, so let me show you what I'm up to with this particular shot. So what I've got here is this lovely dappled late afternoon low light slanting across the path. And because this part of the forest is predominantly birch trees, the white bark picks up the light and creates lots of really interesting contrast. So what would otherwise be a relatively dull shot should hopefully create some interest. Now even though there's lots of contrast in this shot, the exposure is quite straightforward because there's no harsh highlights and no really deep shadows. I'm shooting manually again at f11, around about a twentieth of a second ISO 100. No need to bracket on this, I see this as a pretty straightforward shot really. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of woodland photography is very much to do with light. And just have a look at this bit of light. This huge sea of golden bracken being illuminated on the forest floor in a small clearing with these fabulous pine trunks in the background. I hadn't expected to find something like this. Now, of course, it's very tempting in a forest with great tall trees to shoot in portrait mode to try and get as much of them in as you can. But in this instance, I'm quite happy that the tree trunks are disappearing out of the frame because the star of the show is very much this carpet of dead bracken. So that's what I really want to feature. The textures and light are absolutely stunning. I think most photographers tend to see Newborough Forest 
as somewhere to drive through on the way to the car park for Llandwin Island. Which is a pity really, but I can understand it if you're visiting the island and you want to go and shoot the iconic locations. But if you have a bit more time here, it's well worth exploring and it's even got quite an interesting history. Up until 1947, this whole area between the village of Newborough and the sea was carrot farming country. I understand that carrots quite like well-drained sandy soil and there was plenty of that around. The problem was, every time there was a bit of a storm, sand dunes ended up in the middle of the village of Newborough. So it was decided to plant conifers to stabilise the sand dune system. But what's interesting about it to me is that in amongst the conifers, lots of deciduous woodland has also established itself, particularly the silver birches. And what that means is that there's all sorts of interesting stuff to see for the photographer. I really should come here more often and perhaps I'll come back again when there's mist in the trees with some golden light and all that sort of traditional romantic stuff. But I've really enjoyed today because the light has been absolutely perfect. So what I have here is a woodland photographer's archetype. As many of you know, woodland photography can present all sorts of issues, not least of which is isolating subjects from a background because the background can often be very cluttered. Just up there, tucked in the gloom in amongst its bigger brothers, is a sapling struggling to compete that gets a bit of sunlight about half an hour every day if it's lucky. And woodland photographers always look for something with contrast that can stand out from what can be a very cluttered background. Now in all honesty, as it looks on the screen here, it isn't really separated from the background. But I have a bit of a workaround. So what I've done with this subject is to position myself quite a long way back. And what that means is that I can use quite a long zoom, so my lens is currently set to about 105mm. In addition to that, I've opened the aperture right up so that I'm at f5.6. Put those two things together and you get a, quite a shallow depth of field. So that means I should hopefully be able to throw all the clutter in the background completely out of focus. Also, even though it doesn't look much on this particular camera, the sapling is getting sunlight and the areas around it not so much. So we'll see if this works out. Now I had a really nice time down in the forest, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And on the way home I passed one of my favourite spots in this part of the island. It's actually the highest point and just over my shoulder is an old observation post from what was RAF Bedorgan. Now it's just sheep fields. In fact there's a trig point in the garden of the house just here on the lane. But the reason I like this point is it gives me a fabulous vantage across the Snowdonia. So I've stopped to take a cheeky panorama really as a throwaway test shot as much as anything because it's the first time I've used this lens here. Normally I come here with a 300mm lens and today I'm using the 18-200 uh, to 200 that I bought a while ago. Now as you can see there's some lovely clouds sitting above Snowdonia at the moment and that's what caught my eye as I was driving home. So I've taken a panorama of about, I think I'll probably use four or five of them, I've actually taken I think seven uh, frames. All at f11, focusing just across the water there, you see the forest in the distance, that's where I was earlier. And the water is the uh, tide coming into the Kevney estuary at Maltrith. But as you can see, the view across to Snowdonia is absolutely superb. Uh, and that's why it always catches my eye when I drive past. Uh, I expect to be back uh, in two or three months time when there's some snow on the mountains because that's when it starts to get much more interesting. Well I think I'm going to leave it there for this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very much for coming along with me. I've really enjoyed it because I've got back to what I know and love which is being out in nature. So hope you'll uh, come along with me next time. Thank you very much for watching and if you haven't done it yet why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.